Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Sacred Sage and I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be talking about animations, but before that, as a reminder, if this video helps you, consider subscribing and leaving a like or a comment. I'd really appreciate that. I have some cool stuff I want to get into, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm in Daz Studios and I got it all loaded up and I have the model here in the A pose, right? So we're going to be talking about animation. So let's first talk about what an animation is. So an animation is basically taking one point and moving that model object or whatever to point A to point B. So I got my pain, uh, my uh, timeline pane up here. If you do not have it, you can go to windows, panes, and down here at the timeline. And then you can place it wherever you like. So as a thumbs up let's go ahead and get a character into a pose that I have already saved so this will be our frame zero pose this is her starting pose so now that we have her here let's talk about this menu we have going on here so this little marker that you see that has a little black triangle that is what we call a key so a key is basically point a this is point b so what daz does is take point a and try to move it to point b now point b is the same as point a right now so let's take this and we will pick let's say this pose go so now we have a point B so point B and the character slowly moves frame by frame to point A so 0 5 10 15 20 25 30 and so forth those are your frames that is your FPS that you see down here frames per second 30 so this is a since this is a 61 frame animation it is basically two seconds you're probably wondering, wait a minute, 30 and 30 is 60, why do you have 61? Well, there has to be a starting frame, frame zero, right? So if you just do 60 frames, you'll have frame zero to 59. So that is why we do 61 frames instead of 60 frames. Now, FPS, what you have to consider is how much movement the character is going to be doing. If the character is going to be doing a lot of movement, you probably want to do 60 frames per second so that the the painted picture of the model going to that position goes a lot smoother but if you're doing something minor like this you can probably get away with just doing 30 frames per second so and what they do is they just run through each one of these renders because each one of this is going to be a rendered image and you they run through this really quickly and that is how the animation is created all right Let's talk about some of the basics dealing with animations. Daz animations are terrible. In, in fact, it's a complete dumpster fire. But compared to other programs, Blender, iClone, Daz ain't even on the charts. But for those people like myself that's a complete masochist and they subject themselves to this type of torture, I'm going to try and help you out. So here is the biggest problem with Daz and their animation. So let's go ahead and clear out our model's pose. So if you click on this hamburger down here on the pane and you go to clear animation and clear figure, it will clear all the keys and all, all the nodes of these back to zero and you're back into the A pose. As you can tell, our character does absolutely nothing. So she is cleared out. Let's go ahead and load up our, where you at? There we go. Frame zero and go to our pose frame zero that I've created. Now, all I basically did was I created a pose. So I got her with a smile and a pose that I like and I hit file, save as, pose preset and then bam and I saved it. In this basic 
basically what I did is so that I could create a loop. This is an easy way to create a looping animation. So let's go and look at some of the, 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 the bad things Daz have. So this little pin right here has a couple of options. You have pin translation and pins rotation. So basically what this does is translation, when you pin it, means it won't move up, down, left, right, down, forward, sideways, and all that stuff. Now, pin rotation means it won't turn or twist. So theoretically, by hitting both of these pins, the object, the foot, which I have pinned in translation and rotation, should not move. So let's take this leg, for instance, and we are going to move this. So let's, whoop, I'm even gonna do it like this. I'm just gonna take this leg and I'm going to move it down. Bam. Now, oops, I did that wrong. Let me show you a better, a better way so you can actually see what's going on. So we're gonna take frame 30 and then we're gonna make this change. So then when we go back to frame zero, she's back up into original spot. Now, theoretically, her foot is supposed to be planted, but Daz, being Daz, watch her foot. That is not staying still whatsoever. <laughs> not at all. <clears throat> so you have to play around with that and you have to try and more than likely you'll have to physically move the foot to a closer spot than what it originally was. So there's always gonna be a little bit of shaking because, well, Daz, that's the way I put it. Like I said, this program is the worst when it comes to animations. Now, let's say you wanna do a loop and you want to go back to the original position. It always keeps to the last keyframe. So we that is the reason why I saved that last pose. It's so that I don't have to physically change and go to each bone and be like, oh, well, the bone is 19.94. So I, then I come over here and I'm like, well, no, that's 19.94. And I type in each individual note. You don't have to do that. Just save the pose. So let's go back and where you at? Content library, where you be at? There we go. Bam. And then we're going to go ahead and plop this into frame 60. And in theory, it is a rotating animation so you can render this out and put it in a loop and it will literally just keep going forever and ever and ever right unless it doesn't there it goes you gotta go I, I just had to go a little bit slower so as you can tell bam and back up to the original position so that is the basic idea of an animation. There are other ways to keep things kind of flowing correctly. So you could, you could technically, let's say you want to move two object pieces together. Let's say you wanted to move this foot and this foot simultaneously in the same direction, even though you could, let's, I mean, theoretically you can do it with the hips, right? So, oops, well, I got them. Let's take off the pins so you can unpin all and then it'll take the pins off of everything, every joint. Or you could just say off that location. So off that selected, we'll take it off the foot, unpin all, the whole model. So theoretically, we can move both feet with just the pelvis, right? But let's say you don't want to move the pelvis or let's say you want to keep the pelvis where it's at, keep these legs where it's at, keep, uh, and, but you just want to move this leg and this leg, we can create I key nodes, right? So create new I key chain and we'll do RF. And then we will do LF plop, plop, and plop, plop. And now we just made two chains and we can combine them together you can also pair this up with a node. Label one already exists, whatever. You can also pair it up with a node. So now when we, when we rotate this or mess with this, 
they go together. They're stuck together like glue. Let's say you want to rotate them. They rotate together, both feet. Well, try to. There are still limitations, but that's the idea. If you want to move two pieces together, now granted, you know, this ain't going to work with like walking or anything like that because the legs are going in separate directions. But let's say two characters are holding hands. You can have the one character's hand and the other character's hand on an I key node together so that those hands stay connected. In theory, they'll still be like wiggling like I just showed you with the feet, but for the most part, it works and you just got to do minor tweaking. Now, we can also do another thing that I have done on occasions. So let's make a camera and we'll call this camera 11 just to type out random stuff and we'll copy that. I want this camera to move around this character. One easy way to do this rather than trying to do it mathematically is we can actually just take this character and we can create a blank node. So let's say a, a, null, a, a null point and we go ahead and accept and then we put the camera to the null and then all we have to do is go to that camera and we rotate it Ooh. granted the camera has to be on the actual model so let's go ahead and do that there we go now we can rotate around our model perfectly very easy very cool and you can also do the same for let's say you want to do like uh start with the characters you know like they do like they do in the movies or whatnot where they start at the head and they go all the way down you can do the same exact thing with the null i'm moving the null which the camera is connected to just like that very easy like i said there's other programs that are a lot better at animations than daz but for some ungodly reason, I learned how to do animations in DAS Studios. Now, when we're exporting an animation, there's a specific type of way you want to do it. So, let's say I want to render this out and make the animation out of what I've already produced. What we can do, and the best way to do this, is if we go into render settings, we go into general you can see the specs I got it as HD uh, still image we need to switch this to image series it will ask you what render range you want to go range 0 to 60 that is 61 frames that is what we have so yes that is what I want 0 to 60 you type in a name for that image series so basically Every render will come out. It'll have this with the number 00, 01, 02, 03, all the way to the complete animation is done. Now, this might say JPEG. My recommendation is uh, change that to PNG. The reason why is JPEG does not support transparency. So if I rendered this out, it'll be a black screen if it's JPEG. And if I try to apply a background to it, it's not going to work. PNG will. It recognizes transparency, so you can throw a backdrop in the back of the animation if you wanted to. Now, you can also just render it out, full animation, background and all, which I do that on more occasions than I don't. I find it easier, and the lighting looks better when you do the whole scene, render by render. But if the render time is way too long or you're on a time crunch, you might have to do it this way to where there's a background that you have to apply afterwards because this will render a lot quicker than with a whole scene of a house or whatever you're rendering at in the background for each render. So I've done quite a few renders, uh, uh, animations like this as well. When you do, you have to change some other settings so that the lighting isn't all wonky. Like uh, instead of, I do all my lighting so I generally don't have to worry about it but if you if if you're just starting out you have a dome light and and all sorts of stuff, I have all that turned off so I can just do scene only so the lighting is always consistent but in most cases people use dome lights so you'll have to tweak the lighting that's another reason why I kind of shied away from it in the beginning
So we got the image series base name. We got it on render type of image series. Auto lamp is never because it should never be on. And the series path. Okay, cool. Now you can go to progressive and you can kind of change this. Maybe you don't want a 100% rendered image per image you can change all of that so let's say i only want a max sample of like a hundred or you know so once it reaches a hundred samples it'll be done or let's say i only want the rendering converge ratio done at 25 percent of the picture versus 95 you can change that too and it'll just start you know spitting out the images but after you have that you go into premiere and you literally just image series the whole line or the whole folder and bam you can play your animation so that's the gist of it hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did like thumbs up all that good stuff and until next time take care bye bye